We've got the best of the best. And I've got some tricks up my sleeve for Pico. All that and more right now on the Ripe Rundown. That ball is annihilated on the money in town. And the ball's on fire. Wow. These guys are out of their mind. Back flipping makes the catch. Oh, what a cannon. Oh, a new trick added to the arsenal. A colossal flash. Are you kidding me? Welcome in to episode two of the Ripe Rundown. Biko Scala, broadcast entertainer of this here club. Kyle Boy, Kyle Luigs, the ace of your Savannah Bananas. How you live today, buddy? Pretty good. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on in April. I'm officially one year older. Um, my hairline has receded back just a tad. And uh, I threw a lot more pitches in April, and I'm, I'm looking forward to recapping them with you. Listen, showman of the night for this guy. We will get into a little bit of that and a whole lot more in the best of the best from April. It is the Banana Ball Brief. Kick it off on April 6th in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. Noah Bridges, a little cruel summer. We're in our Swifty era. Dalton Malden, he's doing his best Frankie Valley impersonation. Not just the star on the mic. Out there, Robin Reese Hampton with this hot shot up the middle. Songbird of our generation keeps it scoreless. To the bottom of the ninth we go. EJ gets plugged, fellas, recreate. Little weekend at Bernie's, and then later in the inning, Danny Hosley, the winning run at third, gets driven in by the other Dan of Banana Land. Mr. Oberst brings him in. After a Bananas win, to the seventh we go. Reese Hampton getting it going early and often. Solo shot to right, jump to the players dance. Well, before we get there, Biko, I've just got to say, I thought we talked with the film producers after this. None of the home runs I give up are supposed to be in this clip. Sorry, Kyle. Let's go to Maceo on the mound instead. Oh, a little backflip pitch. Good stuff after a furious comeback. Dakota McFadden pops it out to Baber. Animals win 5-3. April 13th now, Joe Lytle. See you later! Celebrates with a kitty slide. Dakota stilts all Britain with a bomb off the Shermanator. Animals still lead 5-3 in the ninth. Ryan Cox flies out. Those boys in black and pink snag another W. To the 15th we go, Joe Lytle scoring on an error, a little sprinkler celebration, then Danny Hosley See ya. to the land of good and plenty, and slamming that big bat on the ground. More from that later. Now Michael Deeb up with the inning run on first, draws a sprint to walk off the inning, stilts, fights an inflatable man and kicks his tuchus. To the bottom of the sixth, Bill Leroy, well, he gets nailed with a pitch. Boys are gonna help him to first with a mini car. Ziggy playing with pyrotechnics. Vava tap dancing away. And now it's up to Michael D. We need an inside the parker for the Bananas to tie the game. He lines it to left center. And here comes the most dramatic play of the night. The throw to Lytle is not caught. Deep slides in. We're tied eight to eight. And for the second time in Banana Ball history, that's how the game's gonna end. That is unbelievable. The tie it was and the last tie it will ever be in Banana Ball, Biko. It's Mr. Electric coming on in with the help of the Banana Nana, Zach Frangelo and Melison Bean, Supreme, two-stepping to the dish. Tyler Gillum, he's caught himself a DR Meadows. A lot of shenanigans early on, then top of the seventh. Are you kidding me? The doctor with the dinger, and that's the end of the big bat. It had a really good life. Now the Nanner's down by two points. Ryan Cox, the tying run. That's a fly out to left. Party animals are church clapping after another win. We go to the capital of West Virginia in Charleston. Kyle, Jackson, and Dan all on the bump. Mr. Oberus gets the strikeout. Still goes to you though, Kyle. Now, Dakota McFadden. Fans in the stands, a lot of his friends. He's gonna take a trip to the land of good and plenty. Walk off dung. Cox takes it off. Jackson Olsen, he walks off the inning. Oh, Jackson Olsen with a little power surge in April. Shout out to Rod Blackstone, the toast man, doing what he does best. Two Hosley trick plays for the price of one. Bananas win night one, four to two. On to Saturday, Bridges Brothers, a little weigh-in dance. Fellas channeling their inner Avengers. Deerman leading the charge. And Maceo, he's gonna pop in the stands, handed out some flowers. Beautiful sights. Speaking of such things, Eric Jones. That guy hits balls hard. That's out of the ballpark. Now Matt Wolf playing second base. Huh? That guy is not a one-trick pony. Really nice snag out of the air. Top of the eighth. 
Stilts. He's going to widow we gwitty right off the field. Bottom of the ninth, Bill Leroy up. It's the Prince of Banana Land, and that's the ball game. 5-2 to the Dirty Birds. They split the series. April 18th, back in Savannah. And there it is again. I mean, Bryson Bloomer, he's a great hitter, but what are we doing putting these clips in there? A guy can make a bad pitch every once in a while, but we don't need to exploit it on the banana ball rundown. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll, we'll edit those out for May. Sorry, we've got to tell the, tell the people editing that uh, take out the Kyle home runs that he's given up. Jackson Olsen! See ya! Another one from the kid. Jackson Olsen drives it down the right field line. He's walked the inning off! Bill Lee on the bump facing Sean Fluke. That's the old-fashioned radar gun, courtesy of Mr. Oberst. Now Jake Skull. That's a single in the first. That's a homer in the third. That's a triple in the sixth. You know where this is going. Jake Skull. Oh Blast that to left center. The first cycle in banana ball history. Here we go. How do you feel about the first uh, cycle ever in banana I don't ball know. history? Hey, I never did it in pro ball, but it feels real here. It feels real here, good. Let's go! You heard it here first, baby. By the way, Bloomer would hit another home run, not off of you. It's the first ever two homer game in banana ball. They both had 10 total bases. First time that's ever happened. First cycle ever. A historic drubbing by the party animals, nine to one. To Tampa we go. George M. Steinbrenner Field. Take it right to the top of the nine. Oh my gosh! Bananas were so close to losing. Eric Jones makes it a one point ball game. Now we're tied after Deeb gets a sprint. And Dakota McFadden, he's going to play hero. D Mac 0 for three. And a count one and two. Lined into right center field. That's going to do it. Dakota McFadden walks it off. Mariners win Florida. And they win tonight five to four. Not a doubt there was family in the stadium for that one. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to just get them to every game. It'll be the best player in the history of the sport. Following night, Major Leaguers with a rematch, and you toss this one right behind Nick Swisher's tush. What an intro to Banana Ball for this guy, huh? Definitely. I mean, Bill wanted to go for it, and I think nobody better than Nick Swisher to lead it off with that and just kind of set the tone for the start of the game. Got a bajillion views on Twitter. Now, this is over 100 feet, and you're going to strike out Josh Runicky. Questionable call. We'll take the K. It may have been a tad outside, <laughs> but I'll take it anytime I can get it. Yeah, how about Tolton Malden getting struck out by Colin Ballister and the requisite boogieing from the bail man. Now, Matt Wolf on the bump. He loses his trousers. Stilts plunking Michael Morse. What are we doing here, boys? And Heath Bell power sliding into the mound. All that to say 8 nothing win for the Nanners. That tied the largest margin of victory in banana ball history. That was set just three days earlier. And what a month of April it was. My favorite statistic from that month, my birthday, April 25th. <laughs> but I digress. We're going to get into the stat leaders of the month. We're going to stick with the same statistics, MPI, trick plays, home runs, and batting average. A couple things that stand out for me personally um, is Stilts getting his MPI down to 420. Don't blaze it, and he is going to replace Bill Lee in the five spot. Ryan Cox is still cranking along in the trick plays. I think I'm at like four or five. I'm not sure where I'm at on that list, but I think that I should be an honorable mention. And I've got to say that DR David Ray Meadows um, really had a month of April. He's climbing in that batting average, and Oberst is actually going to climb over deep in the top spot of our batting average. That's really good stuff, Kyle. Okay, how about those pesky party animals? Uh, Brett Helton leading the entire tour in MPI with the old 315. Tucker Perry right behind him. The Babester has overtaken Bryson Bloomer in trick plays. He is on a terrific pace. Jake Skull still pounded balls out of the park at an insane rate. And the Boomer, Bryson Bloomer, boy, that batting average dropped down carry the one 24 points he's still leading the tour that's how good he's been okay a lot to digest there take a deep breath kyle what stood out to you from the month of april i think just bouncing off of the the tour stat leaders that we had from april i think from the banana side of things jackson and dr definitely having a hot april as well as probably one of my favorite stops that i didn't think would top arizona was Tampa Bay. I mean, getting to play against those MLB PAA guys, as well as, you know, one of the best crowds I've ever seen in night one against the party animals. Yeah, Jackson Olsen leaving the park at an insane rate. 
in April. And then DR Meadows hit 515 across the month. I mean, are you not entertained? We've also got a lot of firsts. We've got Jake Skull cycle. We've got a two run home run game from Bryson Bloomer. I mean, there's a lot of firsts to be had in this game and we had a bunch of them in the month of April. Who was that first homer off of that Bloomer hit in that two homer game? I couldn't tell you, but it certainly wasn't off of number 12 and it certainly most definitely wasn't off of me. I'm going to go after this and erase that, all that from the from the footage. Yeah, number 12 on the field, number one in our hearts. It was a wild April. Now, there were some fantastic plays. You did get your fifth trick play, by the way. You nailed that right on the head. Uh, let's get in to our potassium packed plays. And as Michael Vitamin D exits stage left, Dalton Malden into the box. First pitch swinging, chopper to Bloomer. Bare hand, toss across the diamond. He makes it look so easy. Your 2021 Coastal Plain League champion teammate, Mr. Kyle Lewigs. Welcome upon the broadcast again, buddy. Now, were there any questions in particular from the Dirty Birds? As that one, diving stop, Danny Hosley, throw to first. Pulls Oberst off the bag, but he lands on it just in time. Uh, dynamic play there from both Dans on the right side of the infield. There's been a lot of chatter in the pro dugout about Hosley. Where's this kid from? What's he got there? Remember him shutting it down last night, strikeouts, yes. getting hits, diving plays. He's been really good the last two days. And now Dustin Faber, the second baseman, one for three tonight. DR breaking in, diving catch! Oh, the doctor! Spectacular for his second straight time tonight. Really nice play. By the second year banana. You go from one of the best hitters we've ever seen play in this stadium to the guy who's actually leading the tour in batting average. And oh, oh my gosh! Play. Kyle oh my Lewis God. between the legs! Dazzling snag. Wow. You're telling me, are you <laughs> kidding me? Kyle Lewis between the legs. Dun -na -dun -na -na. Not wrong. That is. Wow. That's a trick play and throw out, slap a star next to it in your book for good measure. Nearly went down into a split there. That was impressive. For the second straight night, Baber mic'd up. Oh, that's a barrel. You got a guy? Flair. Flies it to DR Meadows, who backflips. Backflips it. He's going to try to tag. He's going to shoot him. He's gone. Put it on. What a throw for DR. Let's go. Love a little double play to end the ending wow. right there. Phenomenal. Just like they teach the kids at home to get behind the baseball, do a backflip, and then shoot your cannon <laughs> out to third. See ya. Never make third out at third, but uh, I guess Joe had different plans there. It's all about the fundamentals. Backflips, heaves it to third, and you couldn't have had a better throw. Good scoop over there by Jackson Olsen, the great eight. Applies the tag, and that's probably the greatest double play I've seen in my life. I personally. Thought that you would have had the best play of the month, and then of course DR backflips and guns a guy out at third. I mean, the guy's gonna get you when he gets you, and it goes back <laughs> into you know the, the sport that we're building, and you're seeing a lot of trick plays that are also being incorporated in your average you know baseball play. Um, I would definitely say that mine was instincts only, you know, speaking from a personal perspective. <laughs> but I mean, DR backflipping and then having the the whereabouts to throw that guy out at third is just un unbelievable. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, this is just. Banana ball trickery oozing into your everyday fielding out there. I mean, that was that was just about as good as they come right there. Okay, let's scoot on in to Banana Land's best because we had some pretty magical moments throughout April. Let's jump into Biko's life here. I'm sitting in the broadcast booth. All of a sudden, I see a line of players, flowers being thrown. Kyle's in dead center of it. What's happening, buddy? Well, a wedding in March, an engagement in April. I get to be a flower boy here. I also get to shoot off the little poppers when she, in fact, said yes. I'm not sure what that was. I can't even remember what song was playing, but it had to get my tookish moving. And I can't think of a better way, you know, pregame than to have a little bit of love in the air. And then to Tampa Bay we go and talk about a strong six-year-old. She's already beaten cancer, Jaylene, what a rock star. Yeah, definitely, and this was a cool moment for, I know, especially um, me, Ryan Cox, and Jackson Olsen, whenever we got to make a, a video for Jaylene about three months prior. Um, so it's one of, another one of those really cool moments where it comes full circle and you actually get to meet them at the game and have that face-to-face -face interaction, which just plussed it even more for us. Shout out the Children's Dream Fund for making that happen. I actually wrote a song for Jaylene. You can 
guess what it was too. I didn't get to see her, so I'm just saving that for the next time she comes to Banana Land. And that was just a couple of the uh, amazing moments that we've had. There's too many to throw in one video. Yeah, I definitely hope that we have at least one of those every month. And it's so cool to see these kids and their wishes and the things that are making them happy in such a tough time in their life is the bananas. I mean, it's, it's the coolest thing that I've ever been a part of. Yeah, speaking of, JJ has been back around a bunch of times. He's starting to swing the lumber, man. He's got a good, he's got a good cut. First time here throwing it, second time through um, swinging it. You know, next time I'm hoping he's dancing, maybe getting on top <laughs> of the dugout, getting into the rest of the banana ball antics. I love it. We'll, we'll definitely have that on the docket. Okay, let's scoot on into a brand new segment, Kyle. All aboard, buddy, because it's time for Celebration Station. <laughs> We are celebrating our best celebrations and some of our more unique shenanigans in Banana Land. How about DR? You saw him hit this homer in the banana ball brief, and then he's going to shatter the big bat on home plate. The train has left the station, and the big bat <laughs> has left the stadium. RIP to that one. And what is, what is this? Speaking of leaving the stadium. Gosh darn it, see ya. Bloom. Listen, bloomer off of me, myself and I. And he's going to take, I mean, there's no better way to celebrate a home run than the slip and slide at home plate. I was a big fan of that. And then here is our director of entertainment, Zach Frangelo, and our queen of the K Club, Melisent Bean Supreme. Could you and Bill do this one? Seen that at Saddlebags once or twice, and I think everybody's feeling how Joe Lytle's feeling in the background there. I mean, that was hot <laughs> and spicy. And Zach would ground out. <laughs> On to Charleston, DR gets plunked. A little woozy, hits the ground. Uh-oh, what's the, what's the way to get this guy to first? Well, obviously, the little banana mobile there. Must have taken that thing to AutoZone because that thing is purring down there. <laughs> no sponsors. Okay, Eric Jones, he gets nailed, and now it's weekend at Bernie time. Uh, shout out Noah Bridges and the Invader for just keeping him afloat. Yeah, is he dead or is he alive? Is his neck up? Is he going to be able to run to second? All questions we will answer after this. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Uh, yeah, let's, so he's 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 not dead. He is alive. He is very much alive. He's still with us. And he did run immediately after that. And yeah, one thing that just stands out to me is I don't I don't know what we're doing. I don't know why that clip keeps. Get, I mean, we've we've uh, we're, we're trying to squeeze it into every segment that we're doing this this recap. Yeah, Chris Sachi hasn't been here a month, and he is just. I mean, Bloomer hit hit it good. Don't get me wrong, but I mean. Been torture for you this morning, huh? It's enough. We appreciate you suiting up and going through it with us. Scoot it on over to our best trick plays of April. You voted, we counted them, you spoke, and DR's backflip was the best of February and March. It will go up against the best of April. It's time for the ripe stuff. Coxie again at short using the noggin boss, the extra size hat for a catch. That's the first out of the game. Yeah, definitely. Way, good way to kick the game off and just the, the, the whereabouts and the knowledge to go straight to the noggin boss on the jam <laughs> shot from Reese Hampton. And I think the, the, the level of degree, the difficulty is just is n not known. You know, <laughs> first game good. in the noggin boss. We don't know how hard it is to catch one in there. And the glove magician with an excellent play there. Now we go to his counterpart, Chase Acuff. Bounce pass to the bare hand, Baber to first, two outs, that one's sweet. Yeah, as you would call it, cute, some would say. And you're very fond of that play. You know, sometimes that infield dirt is hard as a rock, and sometimes it's just straight up mushy. You never know what kind of bounce you're going to get, and for Baber to go barehanded right there into a smooth transition for the 6-4-3 is just next level. Baber has been the king of the bounce on the tour thus far. Acuff getting in on the action. Those boys smooth as silk up the middle. Now to number three. Breland's at the dish. Chop, chopper up the middle. Ryan Cox between the legs. 360, two trick plays for the price of one. This was sweet, and we haven't seen anything like it. A couple things worth noting here is the trip to the celebration station that he takes with his teammates after the play. Yeah, the people watching at home, I mean, the degree of difficulty on the 360 throw up the middle to first is hard, let alone going between your legs before that, as well as Dalton Malden and Split all hanging out in center field with DR Meadows. 
There's a lot going on as per usual in Banana Land. The Glove Magician with an excellent play. Here is Breland. He's been going between the legs nonstop in April. He's got that football again. He is very fond of that football. I don't think he can decide which sport that he wants to pursue professionally going forward. Right now it's baseball and he is catching everything in between his legs. The guy literally can't stop. Well, he was actually the Gatorade player of the year, his senior year in high school for football and baseball in Hawaii. Uh, so I guess he could keep carrying around this puppy wherever he goes. Yeah, Breland with an assortment of athletic equipment with him, depending yeah, on- Yeah, kickball earlier. Depending on the night. Children's chair. Now, our fifth and final play, Bryson Bloomer. That's just a web jam. Oh, Breland on the other side of the diamond, between the legs, gyrating the hips, football in hand. This was next level. And it's gonna start as a normal play, leak into a trick play, and Breland Almodova is doing everything in between his legs in the month of April. <laughs> but it's, it's the exact opposite of DR, which was the backflip trick play going to a top play. That is absolutely correct. Another phenomenal month of trick plays. Remember, you will vote now DR's backflip against the top trick play in April. DR's backflipping in March. He's backflipping in April. He's going to backflip whenever he's 100. There's no doubt about that. We have a bunch of good trick plays here. We had a great month of April. I'm a year older. You guys don't forget that. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to a great next month we've got going into May. We'll see if the Boomer and Breland can dethrone the backflip. It'll be, re be really fun to see. Okay, that is all for us. We will see you again in the month of May. It's going to be May. April showers bring May flowers. See ya! Catch you on the flippity flop. We'll see you later!